and here began it. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, a great deed, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I want to rest. No, I'm not going to rest. I'm going to read. I'm not resting. Hallelujah. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. He called thee. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Hallelujah. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way and here ended the portion hallelujah god has already blessed these words so we say glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning so shall it be in the end now and forevermore god bless you take your seats so the word i want to ask you today so i want to speak with you today is what does your action say about your faith what does your action say about your faith? Right? So there's a couple of things that I'm going to go through it real quick. Let me look at the time. 12.44. Okay. And so the first thing is that faith in action, because the scripture says that faith without work is dead. So in order to activate faith, you need work. Right? So faith in action equals faith plus work. And when you have faith plus work, you get miracles. Faith in action equals faith plus work. And when you put the two together, you get miracles. Hallelujah. Tell somebody maybe you're not getting your miracles, either your faith lacking or you don't have no work. Whoa! It's not that God is not giving you a miracle. Maybe you're not getting your miracle because you don't have no work. But you say, I got faith. But faith and work is contingent on each other. They are twins that are conjoined that cannot be separated. You know the conjoined baby that if you separate them, they will die? If you separate work, from faith it will die but if you keep them together <coughs> it's a miracle that these two could live attached healthy for the rest of their lives so there's a couple of things so jesus is leaving jericho and the scripture speaks about batimaeus right because this is the man that is going to show us by example, what is faith in action? And how faith in action can produce miracles. So Bartimaeus is blind. So which means that he never saw a miracle that Jesus did. No. Because he's blind. He only would have heard that Jesus did miracles. Yes. Hmm? But one of Jesus' disciples said that I hear what all you're saying, but I need to see for myself. And even when he saw the Messiah, he said, well, open your hand. I need to put my finger in the womb. Where is the womb on your side? Because many of us would not believe until we can see. But this man is incapable of seeing with his carnal eyes. Hmm? There are some things that you would never...
never be whole with your carnal eyes that you can be whole with your spiritual eyes. Hmm? So, <coughs> he hears that Jesus is passing. And when he hears Jesus is passing, he automatically begins to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. So he's doing this based on a faith that he has, that he heard that Jesus has performed miracles. By now he heard all the miraculous things that Jesus is doing. Jesus is healing. Jesus is raising the dead. He's healing the blind. Lepra is being cleansed. People is being able to walk. He wanted peace on his action. He didn't care what nobody said. Now remember, when he starts to cry out to Jesus, he says, son of David. That does not mean that Jesus is the son of David. Hmm? The fact that he called him, and he's not the only person that would have called Jesus the son of David. He called him the son of David, meaning that he is an ancestor of David. Hmm? So I'm the daughter of Angela, which means that it doesn't mean that she is my mother, but it means that in my ancestral line, somewhere along the line, whether be it she's a cousin, a mother, a father, or a brother. That's what it means. So Jesus is from the direct lineage of David, and the blind man recognized that and calls Jesus by his name. The crowd began to tell him, be quiet. We were trying to get your thing on Ali beggar, man. On the street, come up and play. You want to come and think like, oh, I'm thinking, first of all, he out on the streets by, by right or by trade, he's a beggar, so he must be smelling. He's out there all day, hmm? he can't see, so he ain't washing so good anyway. Not only that, it tells me that the weather condition is harsh because he has a cloak, hmm? but yet still. So why he's calling little calm yourself down, chill out. What's going on with you? Relax. But it says that he cries even louder. And I want to say to you on that note, when you have your faith and you are working according to your faith and you get this courage, whether be it because of the voices in your mind or the voices of your friends or the voice of your neighbor or the voice of your opponent that tells you shut up, you cannot do it, you can't open that business, you can't get that child you want, you can't get that man you want. In that reality, wait a we want to, we talking about Range Rover, you, you, you could afford Range Rover, huh? We talking about house, you have money for house? Even yourself start to tell you, shut up. Yeah. What you're talking about? You do not possess anything to accomplish that. So they begin to tell the man that be quiet. But instead of the man quiet, because his faith was not in himself, his faith was in God, and his, he was showing his faith by calling out. So that's his work. And to get action when he began to call out to God. And when he calls him out and he, he screams some more, and Jesus hears the man and he stops. Jesus stops. You see, it don't matter what people are saying, you know. Huh? It, it don't matter what people are saying, you know. What does God have to say? That matters, you know. Because when the people were telling him, be quiet, Jesus was moved by the call of the man. That it caused him to stop what he was doing. Jesus is a busy man. Things to do, places to go, people to heal. But Jesus stopped. Remember, Jesus is already on his mission. So he stopped on his way. And he stops. And he says, bring him. The disciples go to the man and they say, listen. Come, come. Have courage. I believe by that man, the man bawling, you know, because the Bible says it was a great cry, you know. You're weeping, you know. Imagine that. You could see that, you know what, if I do this, you see this house or this car that I want, it's right here within my grips. And somebody trying to tell you, don't step up on that rock. Because if you step, you're going to break your neck. But you know that if you step up, you're going to get the house. You know, man, desperation hits you. And the man had to have been wailing. Sometimes we got to get desperate. We 
got to get desperate and wail. Hmm? It says that when Jesus stopped and did, he heard his disciples tell him, why I know that because his disciples tell him, be of courage, have courage, come, he's calling you. That means, don't bother, don't bother, don't bother so much. Come, come, he's calling you, come. Huh? And I'm reminded, huh? I'm reminded of the man that went up on the sycamore tree. Not so desperation caused him to go up there. Because he wanted to see. So, when they say come, the amazing thing is that this man clothes have to be his everyday wear. Yes. He begging outfit. Yeah. Hmm? He begging outfit. So, if you're blind and somebody call you, right? You answer the call because he answers the call, right? He answers the call with confidence. The hymn writer says with confidence, I now draw nigh. How do I know Batimaeus had confidence in the power and the authority that was given to Christ, when they call him, he throw off his cloak. He threw off his covering. Because he knew he would not need that no more, you know. He knew in going to Jesus yes. that he was about yes. to be healed. Right, yes. So he had no yes. need for the beggar's garment anymore. Yes. Ooh. I'm saying something to you today. Yes. Yes. Huh? Because the thing that you desire is you that keeping yourself yes. from getting it. Huh? Because you need to put your faith in action. He throws away his cloak. He doesn't question anything. No, no, no. Scripture says that he gets up immediately. Many of us asking God for something. He opened the door. Are we watching it and say, Is it you, Lord? But I'm scared. I wonder if I can really do it. Huh? I don't even have the qualifications. I don't know nobody over there. Can I really go and do that? Can I live there? Can I, can I do that? Can I really drive that? But you've been asking God for it. And now that he opened the door, Bartimaeus did not question the opening of the door. Bartimaeus got up immediately and he made his way to Jesus. And as he made his way to Jesus, Jesus said, what do you want? What do you want me to do? Because a lot of us have faith in action. We're working and making our way. But when we get to Jesus and he asks the question, we don't know what we want. Do you know what you want? No, for real. Because some of the things that we are asking, when given to us, we don't really want that, you know. So he said, what do you want? Fatima said, that I should have my sight. He was certain of what he wanted. What you want, you must have a certain goal, a plan. I said before in our devotion that poor plans, no proper planning prevents poor performance, right? Yes. So if you plan properly for what you want, when it comes in within your grips, you could grab hold. And you say, oh, God is a miracle. You had faith in God, and then you had the work. Touch somebody and tell somebody, no lazy man ain't getting no miracle. No lazy man ain't getting no miracle. Bitch, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? The woman had to go to the well, not so? Yes. Had she stayed in her house and be lazy, she would not get no miracle. Hmm? She had to get up and go. The man at the pool, when Jesus said, get up, pick up your bed, he had to move, otherwise he would not get a miracle, not so? He would, he would. When Jesus, or when the Holy Spirit would have stopped Saul on his Damascus journey and blinded him, he had to get up and follow the directives of the Holy Spirit, otherwise he would not get a miracle. Your miracle is tied up in your laziness. Wow. <clears throat> The next thing, and I'm winding down. The next thing that happens after Jesus heals the man, he says to him, Thy faith, yes, so right which means your confidence in me, and the fact that you was willing to follow what I told you to do has granted you a miracle. So those things has caused you to be healed. What I want you to do now is go your way. Look, look at God. But 
The man does not go his way. Scripture records instead of going his way, after he gets his miracle, he chooses the way of the Lord. Yes. Wisdom. Yes. Bilal. A branch cannot survive without the tree. So the man wanted to stay in direct connection with the miracle giver. So he didn't go his way, but he immediately became a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to say to you that when God grants you a miracle, because some have the faith, some have the action, some have the work, and some get in your miracle. When you get your miracle, don't abandon the tree that gave you the miracle. Don't abandon your Jesus. When you get your miracle, don't abandon your Jesus. So let me leave some key points with you. Let your action manifest the magnitude of your faith. Let your action manifest the magnitude of your faith. Not what you say and boast, but how is a faithful and a faith and a faith. No. Know what you want. Be confident to seek it out. Don't stop short because of what's trying to derail you. Don't stop short because of the noise and the chatter on the line. Don't be scared to cry louder. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't be scared to cry louder. Don't be scared to cry louder. Your neighbor might hear you crying, huh? The people that pass in, your brethren in the church might hear you crying. But don't be scared to cry louder. Because the louder you cry, it stops and gets Jesus' attention. Yes. Yes, yes. Even though it looks like the odds is against you. Finally, I want to say to you, when you receive your manifestation of your faith and your miracle, don't leave God behind. God bless you. And God keep you. May he cause his light to shine upon you. May he give you strength and may he give you peace. I pray God that you will be able to grab hold to the word of Almighty God, huh? That promised not to leave us comfortless, nor to leave us alone. Hallelujah.